Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode, we're going to review our summer transfer activity. A lot of money has been spent, some money has been brought in. And then we're going to play our opening game of the season, which will be against Chelsea. So as you can see, we've brought in £47 million worth of sales and we have spent £104 million pounds that still leaves us with a 21 million pound transfer budget and about a hundred thousand in the wages just don't know how these deals were structured in terms of the installments over three years and stuff like that so we'll take a look first at the outs oliver mcburney has left the club and joined norwich for 26 and a half million pounds now mcburney's been a good player for us particularly in the first season i believe he got about 11 goals he did playing in the striker position. He also got 10 goals last season as well, even though he found himself um, a little bit more second choice once Alexander Isaac had joined the club. So he's done some pr pretty good stuff for us and Norwich obviously taking notice themselves and putting in the £26.5 million pound fee in. He is a good player. I just thought that the players that we've already got were better than him and purely down to some of the signs as well. It, it was fine to let him leave and particularly to receive that much money for who would essentially be a fifth choice striker was definitely a good bit of business on our behalf. Next up to leave was Jack O'Connell who went and joined Brighton for £20 million. Now Jack wanted to leave the club. Um, he felt he had achieved everything he could at Sheffield United and has sought a new challenge at Brighton and Hove Albion so good luck to him with that. But at £20 million for a 27-year-old centre-half who would no longer be first choice, uh, it's just a no-brainer in my eyes. The fact that he's English does mean I hesitated a little bit when the offer was coming in, but £20 million for him is a bit too much money, and I'm glad to have brought him out. The rest of these are not too interesting. Martin Hugh was a youngster, only three-star potentials, ended up joining Carter for 475 k A couple of players released, and Josh Furlong joining MK Dons on loan. I think he's got a little bit of potential he does. He's a promising left back, 18 years old. Hopefully he does some good business at uh, MK Dons and come back to us and look to get um, maybe a loan to a team in the championship next season. And that brings us to the ins, the first of which is Jack O'Connell's replacement in the first 11, Armel Bella Kutchap from uh, Borsham. He's a wonder kid, 19 years old, three-star current, five-star potential centre-back. Uh, physically, he's absolutely fantastic already. Mentally, he's got a bit to grow, particularly that 10 aggression is a little bit concerning, but hopefully, given some game time and some time to grow, he will do so. And technically, again, he needs to grow as well. But I, I am going to be chucking him straight into the first 11, so you will be getting plenty of game time. And at only 19 years old, he will improve massively. So only £9 million for him, which I think is a really good deal. And then we've got four £20 million plus signings, the first of which was Dodo from Shakhtar Donetsk who we signed for £20.5 million. Pounds. He is going to be coming in as our first choice right wing back. George Baldock will be dropping to the bench and becoming our second choice. He is just a very, very talented player. And if we compare him to Baldock, as you can see with um, Dodo in the green and Baldock in the blue, Baldock's got him aerially, mentally and defensively. But physically in speed, vision, attack and, and technicality, all goes to Dodo. And he's very, very capable in that right wing back role. So I was very happy to be able to bring a player of his quality in. Now, we've really struggled to sign central midfielders on this save so far. So I ended up bringing in Danny Olmo, who's more naturally an attacking midfielder. So he might end up playing some games there for us. But Jean-Pierre is definitely slower. Well, he's not our first choice. If, Dan if it was a straight choice, then it's Danny Olmo as a first choice. But I'm going to be playing Danny Olmo in the centre of midfield. Um, I think he can do quite a good job there. We are going to be changing the roles in the centre to uh, accommodate Danny Olmo. Uh, Metzala will be being played now instead of the, uh, is it, I think, the deep lying playmaker. So we are a little bit more attacking in that central midfield area. We might lose a little bit of defensive stability, but I'm hoping changing things to suit Danny will get the best out of him. And he's just an absolutely unbelievable player. And I think. For the price we paid, which is only £24.5 million, pounds, I think it's a bit of a deal. Um, I did actually chase him last summer, and I think they were asking for closer to 35 to 40 So, great bit of business. Physically, he's just the complete player already. Four-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. We're going to be seeing a lot out of Danny Olmo over the coming season. 
Next up was a bit of a dodgy signing. Renato Sanchez from Lille. We signed for £24.5 million. Uh, they were really were struggling for um, central midfielders. And I do think Renato Sanchez will be very, very good for us. I think we've overpaid at £24.5 million, But uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the best out of him. And the money side of things won't matter. Physically, he's fantastic. Mentally as well. Technically, he's a little bit weak. He will be playing as our box-to-box -box midfielder in the central midfield role. Um, overtaking Oliver Norwood and John Fleck. But um, I'm a little bit on the fence with this one. I'm not too sure whether I'm happy about it or not. And finally, the biggest transfer uh, fee of the summer was Erling Haaland from Salzburg. £25 million. And he's just a complete striker. Physically, he's absolutely out of this world. Mentally, he's great too. Technically, he's got the finishing. Uh, he's got the heading. He's, he's just like a complete striker. And at only 21 years old, 3.5 star current, 5 star potential... He's valued at £31.5 million already. I hope him and Esposito can form a formidable partnership up top. This does mean that our January signing, Alexander Isaac, will be dropping to the bench and becoming our third choice striker. I will still try and get him as much game time as possible. But when, once I realised he was available for the sort of fee, like £25 million, I think is a really, really cheap deal for Haaland. And he's just, he's just magnificent. Like, if we compare him to Alexander Isaac here, technically he's a lot worse, but in every other area, he's got him beat in terms of his attributes. Um, and they're both all still only 21 years old. So, bringing them both in, I think, um, it's massively strengthened our striking department, you know. And even though we don't get the most of out of our strikers in the sort of system we play, I still think him and Esposito will bang goals in. So, heading now over to the club vision screen to see how the fans and the board have reacted to our signings, a B and a B minus for Renato Sanchez from the board and fans respectively, which I think is fair enough. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was a little bit less for Renato Sanchez, but the board and the fans are both happy with that. Same with Danny Almo, a B and a B plus. Um, a C for Omel Bello Kutchup, which I completely disagree with. I can't believe a player at only 9 million when we've been spending 20 million plus on pretty much everybody else could get a C. But um, I have no doubts in my mind that he will become a big, big player for us. A B minus from the uh, fans, which is not too bad. A C for Dodo. I can sort of understand this one as well. It was a lot of money for the player of his sort of um, ability. He's not hugely better than George Baldock. But um, getting that strength and depth at the very least, dropping Baldock to the bench and having Dodo as our first choice, I think it'll be massive for us. A B minus and an A minus for Haaland from the board and fans. And a B minus and a B for Alexander Isaac still listed there. So a B minus overall from both the fans and the board. I think's fair enough. So for today's game against Chelsea, this is how we're going to line up, which I do think is our strongest first eleven once everybody is fit and capable. Jack Butland will, of course, start in goal. There was no interest in him over the summer and no reason to sign a replacement, so he's going to remain as our first choice for the coming season. Bella Kotchap join a uh, coming in the centre back role alongside Onjin and T Lo Kerra. No interest for either of these two boys either, so they both stay at the club. Dodo and Pellegrini as our wing backs, Renato Sanchez and Don Danny Olmo as our central midfielders, Jean Pierre behind Erling Haaland and Esposito, who just continues to massively improve, and it's nice to see. So we've had some massive uh, issues against Chelsea over the last season. They knocked us out of both cup competitions, if I do remember correctly. They've actually got a regent in their starting eleven, Alexander Philippe. I mean, he's he's not great. Uh, I don't know why he's in their starting eleven, but aside from that, it is a brilliant starting eleven. Benasser in there in the midfield. He's an elite midfielder who they assigned from AC Milan this summer for forty three and a half million pounds. Got the likes of Reese James, Emerson, Anders Christensen, Jaden Sancho, I think they signed in the first season. Um, just a fantastic side, and if we're to get anything from today's game, we'll have to be at our very best. First highlight of the game, only 30 seconds in. Philippe, who we just took the mick out of with the ball for Chelsea, it falls to Kovacic in the centre of midfield for Chelsea, and Hudson Adoy plays it out to James on this right hand side. He gets Tries to go to the byline. Kera stops him, but he plays the ball out nicely. Kovacic. Emerson drives inside. Butland with the save, but Hudson Adoy is there. And he makes no mistake to get his first goal of the season. And put Chelsea in front inside a minute. Not the best start by, by us. Our first 11 is completely new. Let's be real. Compared to when we first took over at Sheffield United, every single position has been changed at this point. There's nobody that survives who makes 
the start in 11 at the very least so it's going to take a little while to get these new players introduced and involved and get them up to speed but hopefully we just don't struggle too much in the meantime because we've got objectives to meet another highlight now only four minutes in it's emerson once again driving down the left hand side for chelsea and sanchez Ah, oh, that's definitely a penalty there's no need for var there he does he gives the penalty ronaldo sanchez taken down emerson after he drove down that left hand side and Piatek steps up for Chelsea and bangs it in the bottom left hand corner absolutely nothing Jack Butland is going to do about that his first goal of the season obviously and we're sort of sinking without a trace here 2-0 already is not not good sort of hoping for a little break from the highlights but we've got one straight away six minutes in Esposito was in behind and of course a big save by Kepa keeps Chelsea with a two goal advantage we probably should be scoring there and we should be back at 2-1 Another highlight now, 28 minutes in, it's Hudson Doy driving down the right hand side, but he gets dispossessed by Pellegrini and Danny Olmo. Oh my god. <laughs> our, our big central midfield signings, Renato Sanchez and Danny Olmo, are having absolutely great games so far. Chelsea 3, Sheffield United 0, Alexander Philippe, the absolutely terrible regen who start. Well, he's not terrible, but he's not. he shouldn't be starting for Chelsea. He's got himself a goal. Um, not much more you can say about that 3 0. 22 minutes in now when we're on the attack with Luca Pellegrini. He plays the ball in, cleared by Martinez. Hopefully we can get a goal back. Let's just make this respectable. Danny Olmo picks up a loose ball in the centre of midfield. He drives through on goal and Kepa with another big save, keeping Chelsea with the clean sheet. Danny Olmo's got a lot to do. He's, he needs to seriously do some big stuff for us. Another highlight now, 25 minutes in. It's Oh my God, <laughs> we're singing without a dress. This is embarrassing Jaden Sancho's first goal of the season a simple free kick to the back post Butland completely flaps at it and a lot of individual errors really really causing some concerns look at the match stats it's not that crazy we should not be 4-0 down inside 30 minutes potentially five here with another highlight James plays the ball in we managed to get a clear as does Sanchez the second time Esposito sets away Haaland on this right hand side oh he does his man he's in behind and again, Kepa with another big save, keeping Chelsea with the clean sheet. We are going to get a free kick from that. But, um, ah, oh, this is not great. Danny Olmo is going to take the free kick. Goes for goal. Good save by Kepa once again. He's having a great game in the Chelsea goal. And Chelsea get the free kick. I mean, look at this. We're even. We are such an even side right now with Chelsea. Yet, we're getting beef 4-0. Danny Olmo with a free kick. Plays a back post. It falls to Esposito and Kepa again. With another huge save, keeping Chelsea with a clean sheet. Highlight now, Emerson driving down the left-hand side for Chelsea. He's made at the byline, Hudson a die at the back post. Heads it to James, who goes for goal, hits the bar, falls to Emerson. <laughs> oh man, 5-0. It's 5. We're only 40 minutes in. That's the most embarrassing thing. Never mind the 5-0, we've got the second half to go yet. That was a fantastic strike by James. Falling to Emerson on the left-hand side and... I mean, what 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 do it do from here? Another highlight now. Is it going to be another? Is it going to be six nil? It might be. Hudson Adoy's <laughs> Hudson Adoy's beat the top oh, man. <laughs> I mean, what is this? What I had such high hopes. Have I just like made like the biggest mistake of football manager career? I mean, John Pierre here gives the ball away. Um, that's just awful. Again, another individual error. And Hudson Adoy beats his man. Jack Butland <laughs> does a little dance. And um, Chelsea 6-0 before half time. <laughs> oh, we made it in half time without conceding seven. So, go look on the bright side. Um, let's make some changes. We've moved Danny Olmo to a deep lying playmaker role. Hopefully, you'll be able to sort things out in the centre of midfield. It seems to be where we're losing the ball quite a lot, particularly with misplaced passes. Um, but this, this I can't, I can't be too reactionary after this performance. But six nil is an absolute embarrassment. Honestly, <laughs> I've never been this embarrassed after managing a, a, a side for two seasons, and then having this is my first eleven. Every single player I have signed, so it's all on me. Pellegrini coming down the left hand side. Come and get a goal. That's such a poor ball. Didn't manage to find any of our players. And the ball goes out for a goal kick. Another highlight now. Pellegrini with the ball over the top. Esposito is in behind. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. <sighs> and he shoots it wide. 
Another highlight now, Danny Olmo gives the ball away in the centre of midfield once again. Chelsea just pressing us too much and we can't do anything about it. Kovacic finds Emerson on this left-hand side, completely does Dodo and drives to the byline and gets there. But we get the challenge in. Please get it rid. Please fall to one of us. It does a falls to Haaland and maybe now we can break ourselves. Butland with a big kick up to the left-hand side. Pellegrini manages to keep it in. Esposito tries to chase it down and he gets there. Haaland's in the centre with his head. I mean, how many opportunities do we need? I just want one. Look at the match stats, man. This should not be 6-0. So Haaland's had a poor debut. We're going to get him off for Alexander Isaac. Um, a lot of players have had poor, poor games. We're going to get Danny Olmo on the attack of midfield. And we'll get Jean-Pierre off for Oliver Norwood in the centre of midfield. You never know, bringing some of the old boys back might uh, trigger something. Five minutes to go in this match and there is another highlight. I think it's going to be us, to be honest. Chelsea seem to have really took the foot off the gas after going in at half-time at 6-0. I mean, you can forgive them for that, really. Um, and we'll see where this goes. Norwood finds Sanchez. We've got a lot of men pushed forward. Pellegrini beats his man. He finds Esposito in the box. I mean, are you serious? I know that's offside, but... How many, how many chances do we need? I mean, Esposito has had an absolutely dreadful game here. Chelsea, there we are, full time. Chelsea 6, Sheffield United 0. hudson Adoy with 2, Piatek with 1. Alexander Philip, who's just a random regen. Jadon Sancho and Emerson. That was the worst game I've managed Sheffield United in, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, I'll have to reiterate, I can't be too reactionary after a performance like that. Um, it was a completely unjustified 6-0. I would like to say that from the start. They did have the opportunities and they put them away. We had plenty of opportunities and we did not put any of ours away. But um, we've got a lot of new players and they need some time. And I need some time. So uh, let's 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 just get, get over this and pretend like it didn't happen. What we do have to look forward to, though, is our first game in the Europa League uh, ever. So we're going to uh, play our first game, whoever that will be, and we'll pair it up with the Manchester United game in the Premier League. Hopefully we've found a bit of form before that point. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.